How important is corporate social responsibility to supersizing your business? Sharon Horn Nelson here. And our topic today is corporate social responsibility or business, your business, whatever community you're in, social responsibility, meaning what is your obligation as a business owner and participant in the community to the community at large, to society at large, depending on the type of business you have and where you operate, society and community the definition changes. I mean, if you're on the World Wide Web, the internet, and doing business globally, then what obligations do you have to society and the global society? If you're in a community and only operate in that community, what social obligations do you have to that community to be a good citizen, et cetera? Uh, social, corporate social responsibility it includes a broad spectrum of activities as defined by other people. It can include philanthropy, which there's lots of ways to be philanthropic, uh, environmental sustainability, which is a huge topic nowadays, and uh, ethical and ethical labor and business practices, which again, that's defined by the region that you operate in in many instances, and community engagement. How much of these things should you have as you grow and build and supersize your business? And why do you even care? Why do you, why do you want to know? Well, there's a lot of advantages to being a good citizen, right? To being a good corporate citizen, a good business citizen, a good business, and a contributor to the communities that you operate in. Number one, it builds trust and credibility with your organization, which we often want to do when we want to do business with people in an area because people do business with people they know, like, and trust. It enhances your brand reputation. Uh, you become associated with your acts of kindness and your good deeds, just like everybody else does, just like individuals do. Businesses and corporations get a reputation, and we usually want our, our reputation for our business and our brands to be positive, um, especially on the people that we're here to serve. Uh, it, has, it helps us to attract and keep really good talent, right? People don't want to work for an organization that they don't agree with or they feel bad about some of the actions that they're taking or the actions they're not taking uh, as a business. Uh, I worked in a couple of businesses throughout my career, which I will not name, but some of them had really, really uh, bad cultures. Bad cultures is probably the, well, the number one reason people will leave an organization. A bad boss, which is part of the culture, uh, or a, a challenging culture for them uh, is I think the number one reason I see people leave, it's the number one reason I change businesses and change corporations and companies. Or if your goals that you want to achieve for yourself and your career cannot be obtained through the structure that they've got in that organization. That's, that's the reason I left my first corporate job. Uh, but if you want to keep good people, you have to treat them right and let them participate and help in ways and serve in ways, not only within the organization, but in the community as well. And then another benefit of being a positive corporate social citizen is that it helps to drive innovation and growth, right? If we uh, serve the community at large as well as selling our products and services, that gets us a good reputation, which helps us attract the right talent, which helps us to grow and serve more people. Uh, so what are some examples of companies that I think do a good job of this? Uh, one of my favorite brands, and I don't talk about this very often because, it, you know, who I like is none of anybody's business and who you like is probably none of my business. But I like Patagonia. It's an outdoor brand and they do a lot of humanitarian projects. They do uh, a lot of good for the communities that they work in. They, they uh, only source through humane means, if whatever that means. And they, they do a lot of good things in the world. And them existing and providing us with products and services, they do it in a way that makes the world a better place. I guess that's how I would sum this all up. Being a socially responsible individual as well as being a socially responsible organization, business, whatever your business structure is, you know, they say corporate social responsibility, but a lot of businesses aren't corporates anymore. A lot of businesses are LLCs or sole proprietorships. The vast majority of businesses that exist are not big Fortune 500 corporations, right? Or traded on, on publicly traded uh, things. They're the biggest, but they're not necessarily, they're not always the biggest either, by the way. So uh, Unilever 
uh, I don't know that everybody associates Unilever with uh, social responsibility, but they're building sustainability throughout their organization and throughout the communities that they operate in. They do a lot of community outreach. They do a lot of uh, sustainability and things. Salesforce, which is an online organization, I believe they are the biggest online uh, all completely and probably be one of the first online um, cloud-based businesses. So they're big on sustainability as well as uh, doing philanthropic things. They have uh, in employee involvement programs that they encourage. And they also, I can't read my notes, environmentally sustainability. They're working on and contributing to sustainability. Now, like all of these things, there's a whole lot of leeway in how you define them. What is, you know, what is philanthropic? Well, that's defined by whoever's doing it, right? I could give some examples there that I don't consider particularly philanthropic, but more like money laundering, but I won't give those. Uh, and, you know, ethical labor practices, how do we determine what ethical labor practices are if we don't have any agreement on what is and isn't ethical? I, I honestly think we know. If it makes me feel bad, it's unethical. If it makes me feel good, it's probably along the lines of ethical. I don't know that everybody can use that barometer, but that's the one I use. If it feels at all icky, I'm not going to do it. You know, it's like being kind or unkind. It's a whole lot easier to be kind and do the right thing than to do the wrong thing and have to try to cover it up. So that's our topic for today. There's another example. They gave Microsoft as an example when I did my research, but uh, and I, I like everyone else, or a lot of people use Microsoft and Microsoft products and services. Uh, and they they do a lot, you know, they but I'm not a I'm I'm not a Bill Gates fan. I think that he does a, a lot of things in different areas that are against humanity, not for humanity. And that um, it doesn't really negate the good that that Microsoft does because Microsoft does incredible uh work and they, they donate to a lot of causes and they're, they're looking to be, you know, zero carbon, whatever and stuff. But uh, <clears throat> a lot of that, we're not sure what the reasoning and the intent is behind that. So I right. love to know uh, examples of corporate social organizations that you really respect and, and like. Uh, there's other companies. I think of companies like Burton, Burton Snowboards. I love that company. Uh, and you know, we all have brands and things that we can relate to, which is why we like them, which is why we use their products and services. Uh, and that's a benefit of being a corporate socially responsible organization. All right, have an awesome day. I'll, of course, be seeing you tomorrow with another topic to help grow and supersize your business. Have a great day. Bye.